Did my favorite all-around mountain bike simply get better? Or did it get so big and so mighty that it surpassed my own abilities? In this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into the radically redesigned 2024 Rocky Mountain Altitude. Rocky has led its usual horse link design to pasture and has developed a unique counter-rotating dual link rear suspension. But since there's far more to a bike than just its acronyms, we've got plenty of detail to discuss. So let's jump into this initial look of the 2024 Rocky Mountain Altitude C90. For 2024, Rocky Mountain has completely redesigned the altitude and it's a ground up new platform purpose built for racing enduro. I've been riding this bike for just over a week, so I can't give it a long term review, but I can give us a pretty good first look. I'm five foot eight, 174 centimeters tall. This is a size medium bike. Previously, I've always ridden size medium Rockies and I hope that trend continues to the future. Just made it up here to beautiful, uh, beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. And I'm here at Rocky Mountain. We're gonna pick up what I think is gonna be the new altitude. This video is made possible thanks to support from Jensen USA. Jensen's an online retailer in the United States of America for Rocky Mountain bikes. I've got a link in the description below. It takes you over to Jensen's website where you can see all the Rocky Mountain models they currently have in stock and available now. Anything you purchase from those links down below, whether it's at Rocky Mountain Altitude, Instinct, Power Play, Growler, whatever it may be, or just some chain lube, That'll help support my channel. It's a big part of how we're able to make these videos happen. Four short years ago in summer 2020, you all saw my first experience with the Rocky Mountain Altitude. I had never before ridden any Rocky Mountain bike and the whole opportunity came about as Jensen USA had just added Rocky Mountain bicycles to their selection of brands. I was able to borrow the new at the time 2020 Altitude C90. The bike would end up becoming one of my all-time favorite mountain bikes. It had a unique blend of playful mannerisms as well as an efficient pedaling feel. All of this coupled with plentiful suspension that allowed for all sorts of fun possibilities and a moderate reach that allowed for easy wheelies and bunny hops. I loved that bike. But even though I ended up enamored with the bike, when I started riding it, I initially felt like I might've made a mistake. The enduro bike feel with a 170 fork and a 160 rear end was quite different from my usual Ibis Ripmo trail bike. The first few rides, I didn't quite understand that altitude. Then I started to tweak it, and a few weeks later, the bike began feeling really, really good. And over the next 12 months, this bike would grow to be my favorite all around mountain bike. That's pretty high praise right there. Fast forward to today, and the new altitude, while longer and slacker than the predecessor, is also not as long and crazy as some of the other bikes I've been on lately. It still uses the same 170 mm of travel up front and 160 out back and 29 inch wheels, but it does feature some other big changes. So let's dive into the ride impressions. Look at this, sweet. You should have plus or minus five mil offset headset. Oh, cool, okay. So you'll be able to swap those out. And is that gonna, does that need a press or is it just pop? Pops in oh, and out. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, just little O-rings. I think it should be all good to cool. go. Well, thank you guys, I appreciate it. See you guys. Look at this. Got the altitude. Let's take it on a first ride. Only a few minutes from Rocky Mountain Bikes R&D Center is the famous Vancouver North Shore, which is home to a plethora of challenging trails. All right, it's got some flow trail going to warm up to this bike. Ooh, brakes are not bedded in yet. This thing is much more nimble than I was worried it would have grown to. Oh God. It's a wet feature. All right. Few minor adjustments I might make with controls and stem height and all that, but yeah, this thing feels good. Known for its exquisite woodwork and intimidating rock work, this is where Rocky designs its bikes. <laughs> I was enjoying the new bike so much that I actually rode it well past sunset, exiting the trails in the dark. I was having so much fun on the altitude, I tried to do a second lap and it got dark on me up here at the top, so yeah, oops. Oh, go this way. Sweet. Hope the yellow gate's open. The next day, I was quite the eager beaver and set out to be sure the brakes were bedded in by riding a selection of single and double black North Shore classics. Well, hello and good morning, everyone. Beautiful day for a ride here in the rain in the North Shore. 
let's uh, break this bike in properly. Need to do this. Now we're broken in. I'm gonna go try a trail I've never done before. Hopefully it's uh, worth it. God, the initial feel of this bike is really, really good. Um, better than I expected. I was worried it would be all stuck to the ground. Just seeing the new linkage. Pops nicely, jumps good. It does like a bit gnarlier of a trail. So we'll see if it's too much for the easier stuff. If it is, I can't get mad at it. It's a big bike. It feels very responsive to pumping and rider input. It feels efficient when you pedal on it. It does not feel like a big, heavy, super stuck to the ground. Monster. It feels more like a deer. It likes to prance its way down the hill. But when you need to just hold it together and let it suck up some of the bumps. Yeah, so far it's been responding good. Exciting for many, the new Altitude uses a dual link suspension configuration. Technically, it's a virtual pivot point, but it's not the same design as the VPP suspension used by Santa Cruz and Intense. Now, there is a bit of irony here, as Rocky Mountain and Santa Cruz have had some trademark beef in the past, but none of that really concerns how this bike rides. The lower linkage pivots concentrically around the bottom bracket, and it drives the Fox Float X2 rear shock. The leverage curve is well-designed, and the new suspension creates a bit of packaging that makes for a very well-balanced feeling bike. The weight of the shock and linkages are all very centralized, which is a nice feel. Rocky says they had a few reasons to tweak the suspension. The first, torsional stiffness. At only 175 pounds, I never really had any issues with the stiffness of the prior generation altitude. I wish I could say the new bike feels even stiffer, but in reality, it's been so long since I had to return that prior bike, well, I can't really provide a direct comparison. But I can say the bike feels appropriately stout and not overly rigid, so zero complaints from me there. In Rock Gardens, the old horse link design was, in my opinion, just fine. But the new dual link design does feel slightly more forgiving, tailoring the axle path to be more efficient when hitting those rock and root edges. It feels almost as though there's a bit of a tailwind compared to the usual horse link feel when you do hit those impacts. This is a very good thing. As for pedaling, I thought the old bike pedaled just fine, and the new, well, it pedals fine too. But I'm not overly picky about pedaling performance. As long as I can dad pace my way around town, I'm a pretty happy duck. With the stock X2 rear shock, I set sag to my usual 25%. It did take a lot of force to bottom the bike out, but it was a more appropriate initial feel than the prior generation felt right out of the box. Everybody look at me right off of a rock. This one's interesting because you do got to do a drop and then slow down a whole bunch. And the hardest part of all this is actually the steep rocky bit down there. Right here, you ride off the rock. And this is actually the hardest part right here. I had to remove some volume reducers on the shock from that first gen. As I get more time on this new bike, I'll further experiment with rear shock setup, but I haven't been quite as eager to check out if I can remove any reducers yet. While suspension designs get discussed to no end, I personally feel that a bike's geometry matters more. The new altitude is a full degree and a half slacker than the prior. That feels great on the steep bits of trail, which honestly is where this bike really excels. Talk about confidence. However, on flatter trails, with this so slack it's probably unemployed head tube angle, you'll have to spend more time standing up to properly get that bike feeling correct. Yeah, I think you landed in the worst possible place. I think I'll try the steeper suspension position soon, but that 63 and a half degree head angle was far more rideable on the mellower trails than I initially expected. I find I prefer the prior slacker 76 degree seat angles. When bikes get up to and past that 77 degree mark, I kind of dislike how much higher above the ground my center of gravity is while seated, but this really isn't any kind of a huge deal. I almost just smoked that tree in my face. That's where a lot of travel really comes in handy. Could have even used more damping, but that's way harder impact than like almost everything else you're gonna ride the rest of the month. That was sketchy. I think I wanna go a little bit slower next time. <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, I just slowed down a bunch on that rock roll to like the speed I'd normally go. Earlier I was trying to be like, cool guy, go fast, bottom out. But regular speed, it's able to jump over this rock, which is like, you know, head tube height on a long travel 29er. 
Thanks, Rocky Mountain Altitude. Oh, it's another day. That means it's a great day. Cruise out for a ride on the new Rocky Mountain Altitude. Look at this. Get in the sun. Oh, yeah. Look at that thing. I'm wondering if the wheels are heavy. I might throw uh, some non Kushkor equipped carbon wheels on here just to get an AB comparison on if the Kushkor weight is something I'm noticing. Cause my other bikes, only the hardtails and rigids run Kushkor, not the full squish. All right, let's snap in, drop in, and try some fun trail. The new Altitude is a fixed 440 millimeter length chainstay on this size medium, though that does grow to a whopping 450 for large and extra large. Size small is only available in a mullet and uses a tiny little 427 chainstay length. Yes, I could make this medium a mullet thanks to a geo adjust on the rear shock, but I have zero interest in doing that. While I do have half a dozen rides on this bike, I have not yet had time to try all four different combinations of geometry and suspension feel. Don't worry, I will certainly try all, so stay tuned for that. The old bike used what they called Ride 9, the new bike uses Ride 4. Similar concept, just fewer options. Dude, this bike handles good. A big new feature will be the interchangeable head tube cups that allow for differing reach measurements. I think this is super cool. The stock setting has a neutral 455 millimeter reach. While that is slightly shorter than some of the bikes I've been on more recently, I really like it. This makes the long wheelbase bike still quick to respond to rider input, and it keeps the bike relatively easy to bunny hop, at least when considering the rest of the numbers. I did prefer the slightly shorter 437 mil stay on the prior model, but remember, I have zero interest in racing, and instead prefer to ride more traditional trails and rarely ever have time to hit max speed on triple black diamond shoots. The bike can still wheelie a manual just fine, though it does take a bit more effort to get onto one wheel or to even bunny hop than did the prior. I'm hoping a slightly steeper setting with the Ride 4 chip, coupled with a slightly shorter reach head tube cup, will make the bike even more playful than it currently is. I had a few rides on the stock bike when I decided I needed to change one thing. I had even promised Rocky I wouldn't do this, but I had to renege on that promise. You see, the stock build comes with Kushcore installed front and rear. While that's great for the heavier, more hardcore riders, I find that for me and my riding abilities, simple double down or DH casing tires are sufficient. Now, I love Kushcore on my hardtails and rigid bikes, but when I weighed my personal wheels using the same tires as the stock wheels here, they were about 300 grams lighter each. The feel of that altitude was much more fun for me with my regular wheels on there. Eventually, I'll just remove Kushcore from the stock wheels, but in order to publish this video, I didn't have time to dive into tire swaps, so I just swapped wheels entirely. I did have one initial issue, yeah, loose bolts. I would love to say I had zero issues with this bike, but the reality is I did have one kind of minor, annoying, but real issue. Uh, the main lower linkage did loosen up quite a bit. Uh, if I like pull on it, there's a little bit of play in the system. And there's a tool that they gave me that'll help tighten up that main pivot. I had a couple other pivot bolts loosen up, which is pretty normal. Most brand new bikes put together right away. A ride or two later, you'll find a few loose bolts. I'm not too worried about that. So I'm gonna dive in and tighten that main pivot. The guys at the headquarters told me if it does loosen up more than once, a little bit of Loctite goes a long way. So yeah, uh, I'll just try to tighten it back up and then I'll keep riding it. And if it loosens up again, I'll do the Loctite thing and I'll let you know about that in an upcoming video. It's more of a long-term review. The prior gen altitude also had a few bolts loosen up within the first week of riding, but then none of those bolts ever loosened up again. I don't think this is gonna be a problem, but a lot of first bikes have an initial break-in period. Looks like it's a standard. 73, yep, 73 BB. And then this guy goes right in here. Man, this thing was loose. Now that's solid, cool. So that was, that was our culprit. So the biggest hassle with this was simply removing the bottom bracket cup. I'm stoked that Raceface is using the SRAM BB tool standard. I happen to have one, thank goodness. And then the tool fits right in there. I torqued it down much as I could. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully that holds. I'll try this and if it gets loose again, Loctite. I really appreciate Rocky Mountain's well thought out approach to bike design. Lately, I've complained a bunch about gimmicks, whether it's headset cable routing, pointless multi-tools stashed on the bike, unnecessary adjusters or other bizarre systems. The Rocky is refreshingly designed more for the real world and less for those internet spreadsheet battles. It's not well communicated to many of us here in the USA, but Rocky is absolutely a premium brand, providing some of the best attention to detail that I've ever personally seen. Rocky is now including an in-frame storage solution, but that's something I likely don't see myself using. 
Yep, you can write me up as a non-believer of in-frame storage. One small detail I really appreciate is the burly aluminum rear derailleur hanger. That part is custom made for the altitude. However, should you be on a trip somewhere and break a hanger, you could swap a UDH hanger in there in a pinch. The inclusion of Kushkor and true double down tires on the stock build is a move that shows the target buyer for this bike is someone who simply wants the best possible, most turnkey bike right out of the box. The 170 millimeter dropper on my size medium fits me fine, and this most size medium riders will be happy with that post. Luckily, I'm just tall enough to squeeze a 200 mil post in the bike, so I'll swap that as time allows. I also appreciate the stock chain guide and bash guard, as well as the spare down tube guards. So I didn't mean to hit the bottom of the bike over there, but I did hit it. And the bash, the bash taco, thank goodness, took a lot of the front force of the impact, but I did drag a rock along the down tube there. I hope to publish a more long-term review, trying more of the adjustments and fine tuning the bike. But for now, I'm pleasantly impressed with the direction Rocky has gone with the altitude. Nice work, Rocky. If you wanna learn more about the altitude, I've got a link at the top of the description down below, it takes you over to Jensen USA, where you can read about the new altitude or see all the rest of the models they've currently got in stock and available. Anything you purchase from that link over at Jensen, that supports my channel. And that's a big part of how I'm able to make all these videos happen. Big thanks to Rocky Mountain for the loaner bike. Big thanks to Jensen for sponsoring the video. And of course, huge thanks to all of you for watching these videos, making your purchases at Jensen, and overall just supporting what it is I love to do. So thanks everyone.